Me, put, or, oh, well, I put that together, Mr. Mellinger. Well, <laughs> thank so you. Know, you know, I didn't tell me. Get, I, I didn't get my personal copy. <laughs> but this, this is this is really short term. This is supposed to be done by. Um, I mean, we've got that that all for everyone. That is a proposal um, that we submitted. Um, the Federal Highway came out with a new program, not necessarily a monetary program, but more of a just help you out, find the money um, to help uh, uh, communities along the border. Um, uh, promote a uh, border-related project, and in this case, I back along with the Cal County District 11, um, submitted a project um, to uh, expand the East Port of Entry lanes, I guess, to an additional six, or, or, or as many we can fit. That particular project in this study may have some sort of impact depending on the outcomes of the quality bypass. You know, normally that is, is, is would be a great benefit for the printing industry to um, if the body bypass wind that's completed. Um, um, but as far as this particular project, um, we will certainly take a look at to that. But uh, as far as what of a direct impact, you know, I don't, I don't know. We'll have to let that. You know, and, and, and we had talked about this, uh, you know, briefly before before it came in. But the thought, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the thought is is that on the east side. Mexico, we would have a, a much more efficient way to get across the border. And and my thought on that is that if we're getting further away from Forrester and we're getting a more efficient way to get up through the the northerly part of the areas and hook up with the Brawley Bypass, then what that would mean to Forrester is that there would potentially be less mm -hmm. pass-through traffic. Um, now the other thought that you know, the, uh, we're speaking of alternatives. Uh, one of the other alternatives that, that's been kind of thrown up several, but, but one of them that we've, we've been thinking through is a new port of entry at the Mount Signal, mm -hmm. which would basically be on the you know south alignment of the Forester going down to the border. Um, and that would be the second phase of this particular project, if indeed depending on where Forester will is placed. Um, and I know the, the whole that uh, project that the Silicon and, and, and on the many, the Baja California side, that is a more, I think we heard in the last month or so, it's, it's moving forward. And if it, we do get some sort of um, concurrence with the municipality in Mexicali, then this region will then, it will be upon us to, to start planning for that, for that area. And it will just go jointly with this particular project because we'll need to provide a facility um, for cross-border trade. Oh, what arriving late is, is this study going to be specifically on Forrester Road as a road or more on a corridor on the west side? Some Forrester Road. It depends on the recommendation, but that's one of the Yeah, I, and I think what, where you're going, that was where Robert was kind of coming from, where if, if Caltrans gets control of Forrester, then it would act like a Caltrans facility not just a, a two-lane roadway where it would be a state facility. Um, so, so the thought that that would be an alternative as well is that we would, again, have several sets of recommendations. If, if it were to remain in the county, mm -hmm. then it would have this width, this right-of-way uh, requirements, this intersection spacing criteria. If it were to go to a state facility, they've got a, all their whole whole new set of rules, and then we would go ahead and list them out. Um, so either way, hopefully building a maximum flexibility and as far as the decision makers are concerned that we went with this, then this is what would be needed. We went with that. It just all depends on really the recommendations that we get from the public and the analysis. I mean, if, there, if part of the public that wants to keep forest or an ag base route, which we intended for, there are local agencies that want to relinquish the road in the stick and move it out towards this area. And if that's the case, we, you know, we could, we'll have to take a look at a new facility per se. And I mean, there's so many options, and that's what the goal of, of God is. That's to, he's going to tackle that, and obviously, we need the public's assistance on that. And um, that's why. You know, 
So it, it could be either way. It could be looked at as a corridor on the west side or it could be the existing Forrester Road route mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. Because serving Silicon border up until 8, you'd be more likely to use Drew Road because mm -hmm. there is no Forrester Road. Mm -hmm. And that's the thinking of the Silicon border developers is that there, there might be a private port of entry mm -hmm. which would then be located more adjacent to Drew Road in the old days, Highway 98 used to go up to Drew, up to 80, and then over. And it would pretty much follow that old route. So you can take Drew to Interstate 8. Now that's interesting. A, a private that's true. port of entry? Cross border. What do you mean by a private port of entry? Toll. Toll. And that's what Ben Gay would go into. Oh, a right toll now. road. A toll yeah. port. Well, why not a toll road then? And that, that would. That well, on our side, on I like side, that is what we're looking at, too, is the whole road. You know, we're trying to get picked in on with state and federal financial not looking too good. That's that would be around. We should do something where like they just stop everybody in a line and like pick truck or engine for like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, well, I'm on that side. Because there's no development on the east side of on the west side of Boston. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Who uh, who's paying for this, did this study? This particular study? Really? It's, it's, um, I mean, I falls under SCAG, so they're allocated by state and federal funds to do uh, planning studies, and it's called the overall work program, and I'd like to see some funds to do this. Because I've been coming to these meetings for 25 years, and I thought we had it all settled 25 years ago, where these roads are going to go. Now we're start. Now El Central comes in and builds the shopping mall and on Dogwood, and I don't know how in the world they're ever going to untangle Dogwood. You guys? Yeah. It's going to you. Rosa, Rosa has all the answers. Yeah. She does. Yeah. Why the bridge? Didn't you want to run it for 115? Yeah. All right. It was just funding for a month ago for the state the county council and the transportation commission. Um, provide full funding for the overpass. Now, it's up to the city to do the rest. We're working with Calcare. And the IR. And they are. So, we're going on, Mr. Mallinger. Just so I get my 115 connection made. That's right. But the other thing I mentioned. That was not the case, but that's the fight. But, but uh, the other reason why I mentioned Caltrans is they're, they're kind of a bad name around here. It, there's a lot of issues uh, with other road networks around here. Because uh, I'm, I'm seeing those posts, the, the big billboard signs, saying, hey, Cal, hey Caltrans. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's a, a private, private, private one land. private developer yeah. looking right. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, right. He's using right uh, right uh, right uh, right uh, yeah. oh, that. Not he owns the property. Mm. There's a billboard down. Not set that. My unofficial view is that, I, that we have to take a kind of a pragmatic standpoint. I don't believe the county is going to have enough funds anytime in the near future to keep going with 111 and develop a new north south road. And when the Raleigh bypass comes in, make it a lot makes a lot more sense to, to focus our energy on on the existing road. I mean, 111 is a great road until it dead ends and we're going to fix that. Um, but if it were even a better road, then you wouldn't need, now I'm getting on my official hat now, you wouldn't need to do anything with Forrester because it would be so attractive to take 111. And I don't believe that the, the town's going to have, or the state, or the federal highway is going to have funds to build two major north-south Orders, two miles apart or three miles apart or whatever they are. I guess the thought would be that if there's enough private development, right now I, I know you know with the economy the way it is, it's kind of hard to believe. But in the future, you know, with, with assuming the economy picks up again, you, you still think that the private development out in the area? Well, the, the, the county's growth plan is to the east. Nothing, nothing west of Austin. It, it's interesting because uh, on some of the, you know, the forecasts that I've seen, there's a lot of traffic out there, a lot of traffic out there. So, um, 